Hi everyone, welcome back to Eliza's Bookshelf. Today I am going to go over all the books that I bought in September. So I was looking at my little stack of books that I usually keep for books that I bought that month and it was looking a little bit small so I was like I feel like I bought a lot more books you know once I looked around my shelves I was like oh yes I bought this one in September I bought that one in September so yes it's quite a large stack here um and then I have a couple that I want to go over that I got from the bookish box subscription that I forgot to mention before so yes let's get started first one I want to talk about is The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates this one sounded amazing and I bought it in September when I was in a big spooky mood. This month I'm kind of in a YA fantasy type of reading mood month, but this one still sounds really creepy. I might I might add it in like right before Halloween. It's basically about this woman named Adrienne and she's kind of desperate. She needs a place to stay. She somehow inherits this house called the Ashburn House and this house is already known to be really creepy, ghosts walking the, walking the hallways. Um, the owner being mad and crazy as well, but she's desperate and she's like, okay, I will stay in this creepy house. Look at it. If you saw this house, would you stay in this? I don't know. So apparently weird things start happening. There's like a grave site in the forest nearby. Um, yeah, so weird things start happening. Not weird things, creepy things. Um, let's see what it says. It says, strange messages are etched into the walls. Furniture moves when she leaves the room and a grave hidden in the depths of the forest hints at a terrible, unforgivable secret. Yeah, so I don't know. Sometimes when my husband and I drive, you know, wherever and we see houses like this, we always ask each other, hey, how much would I have to pay you to live in that house? Or would you live in that house? Is this something you could do? No, if I saw this house, I would not live in this house. But anyway, so... This sounds like a typical haunted house type of book and I'm excited for it. I might have to squeeze this into my October reads honestly because it looks so creepy and it's perfect for Halloween season. Um, so I'm just going to put this right here. My dogs. My dogs are barking downstairs. Let's just wait until this passes. So the next book is The American Roommate Experiment by Elena Armas. This is her second book and it follows some of the characters that we are introduced to in The Spanish Love Deception. I feel like I'm going to like this a lot better than the first one because the trope sounds super cute. So we have this girl named Rosie and we have this guy named Lucas, I believe. Is it Lucas? I don't want to say. I don't want to lie to you guys. Um, Scanning, scanning, scanning. Hmm. Yes, Lucas. So Rosie and Lucas. The main character in the first book, her name was Lena and this is Rosie, her friend, and this is Lucas, her cousin. So they have a thing going on here. Rosie is trying to quit her 9-5 corporate job and she wants to become a romance writer, but she's having some trouble getting ideas. And so he comes along, they're like roommates and checking it up, right? But he's like, let me just bring you on a couple of dates and spark your imagination. So it's like a close proximity roommate's trope with kind of fake dating they're not really dating he's just giving her ideas anyways i think i will like this a lot better and i have heard a lot of people reading it saying they loved it and people who are starting to read it saying that they like it more than the first book so i am super excited i am doing a buddy read on instagram this month if you guys still want to join just check out my instagram and dm me there um oh the next book is soulmates by susan lee this one I've already read and I actually really enjoyed it. The beginning was kind of bumpy, but in the end I was like, I love it. So this is by Susan Lee. It's about this, um, it's about these two ex-best friends who are reunited and trying to figure out their relationship now because it was like a three year gap that they did not talk to each other. They kind of hated each other because um, they were best friends and they kind of hurt each other in some way and they're like okay we're not going to talk to each other anymore but basically she lives in San Diego and he moves to Korea to start like this k-pop stardom thing and he becomes an actor there and he comes back to visit because of something that happened you'll see but I really liked it it's basically like a love letter to San Diego which I that's where I met my husband that's where I went to school I love it there and it's also a love letter to like 
Korean culture and music and food and stuff like that. I loved it. I will talk about this more when I do a separate vlog for my whole San Diego trip and the book signing, but I like this one. And then we have The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. This is a trilogy, I believe. Uh, YA fantasy trilogy. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if it is YA, but basically the this is the first in the series and it's already a completed series so bonus points because i love starting books when it's just all out already so i can binge it but this one i picked up because i have been seeing it a little bit more recently and i read the synopsis and i thought it was very interesting so you have the prison healer her name is a 17 year old kiva so she's she's the prison healer and she's been tasked to help um one of this old i don't know was it a queen so there, there's a rebel queen who has been captured and Kiva is tasked to keep her alive so that this rebel queen can go in, I don't know, so that she can survive these like four tournament things, right? It's basically what they make these prisoners do to survive, basically. Um, it's like the trial of ordeal, a series of elemental challenges against the, tor against the torments of air, fire, water, and earth assigned to only the most dangerous of criminals. So yes, the rebel queen has to do these trials, but she's like really dying on her deathbed. So Kiva is tasked to keep her alive. And then she gets a message from someone saying, don't let her die, we are coming. Don't let her die, we are coming. And so, I don't know, something crazy happens and she's like, I don't think the queen can survive the trials. I will do it for her, I volunteer. And isn't it crazy? Can you just volunteer to do these trials? Apparently so. Anyway, so she's doing that because if she survives it, then she and the rebel queen can, you know, be granted their freedom. So this sounds amazing. I'm so excited. I've been in a really big YA fantasy mood recently and I just need to get into new series or like new to me, but old series that all the books are out so I can just read it all because I'm really bad at picking up and waiting. Oh my gosh, it's been blurred by Sarah J. Mass. Lynette Noni is a masterful storyteller, a must read for any fantasy lover. Anyways, so that's one of them. And then we have A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy Lin. This one, I don't know if it is a duology or a trilogy, but I do know that the second book recently came out this year. So it is also a YA fantasy um, surrounding like tea making and stuff like that. So basically we have this main character named Ning. It's so sad. So her mom actually died because the main character Ning accidentally brewed a poisonous tea for her. And right now her sister is in danger of dying through the same way. And so she hears about this tournament or this competition in the Imperial City. They're trying to find like the best master of tea making and the winner of that competition gets a wish. And she, so she's trying to win this competition so that she can get this wish granted to help save her sister. So this sounds very magical. I've heard nothing but great things about this book and I just can't wait to read this and then hopefully I'll like it and then get into the second book as well. Um, let's see where to go next. Uh, maybe I'll talk about this one briefly. I'll talk about this one briefly. This is Battle by RF Kuang. I am talking about it briefly because I've talked about it a bunch of times already, but this is basically RF Kuang's new book. She wrote the Poppy War trilogy, which I haven't read yet, and I might want to start that. I don't know if I should start that before I start this one because this one is a chunky one. Uh, more than 500 pages, I believe. Yes, more than 500 pages. Um, it's surrounding like the magic of translation and things like that and that's all I can tell you. I am going to read this next so hopefully I can tell you more. I am reading this with Kaylee, uh, Sam, and Daphne and we are eventually going to get through it you guys. So that's one. Um, the next one is The Fortunes of a Jaded Woman. I actually won this from an Instagram giveaway so that was awesome. It is going to be discussed in October, so sometime this month they're going to message us. It's basically about this family who was cursed to have all the bad luck happen. Like, you know, they're cursed to only give birth to daughters because, you know, daughters are the worst. Um, never sons. And basically the descendant right now is Mai Nguyen and she knows this curse well. She's like divorced. She has an explosive disagreement a decade ago and she's estranged from her siblings and stuff like that. So they're going through it. They're like, I am cursed. And so this person, she's like desperate to have a better life. So she consults a psychic in Hawaii. And this is really big in Vietnamese and probably other cultures too. It's always like, let's go to a psychic. I remember going to Vietnam 
years ago when I was in high school and I lost a hundred dollars, someone stole it and they're like, let's go to a psychic so that they can find out who stole it. So, you know, very big in our culture, but basically she's going to the psychic in Hawaii to try to figure out what to do. That psychic tells them of an unexpected prediction that she's going to find, I don't know, wealth, she's going to find a husband, she's going to find, she's going to give birth to a son and stuff like that. So this is, this is really interesting. I'm so excited to see that more Vietnamese authors are getting attention. So this is out. I think uh, the bronze drum was out in book of the month. Okay. So this one is Loathe at First Sight by Suzanne Park. For some reason, I thought she wrote like YA contemporary novels, but this is going to be my first book from her. When I met Christina Lauren at the San Diego book signing event, they said that they love this one. So I was like, yes, I'm so excited to read this. I actually won this at that event just because I asked a question. So that was great. Um, Helen Wong here says, births with humor, heart, and great energy. I love it. This is a workplace romance. You have Melody Ju, who is a video game producer. And there's like some sexist things going on at work, maybe some nepotism as well. And so she doesn't like those aspects. And there's like a new intern named Nolan McKenzie. And she kind of brushes him off and is like, uh, whatever, this new intern, right? And she like makes a joke with this new video game with male strippers who has to escape the apocalypse. But this new video game like blew up. Everyone loves it. So she's running this show and then she has to work with that new intern, Nolan. And she finds out that he's actually really kind and stuff like that. So yes. Um, but she has all these pressures to like marry soon and marry a Korean guy nonetheless. I am excited to read this one because everyone's been saying that it's so great, especially Helen Huang and Christina Lauren. And when I met Susan Park in San Diego, she was just so lovely. She gave me all these little trinkets for my kids and stuff like that. So unfortunately, I'm like super awkward when I see a lot of famous people, even if they're like mildly famous. I remember I went to, uh, what is it, like a hockey game with my husband in San Jose years ago. And I don't even like hockey, but when I saw the hockey players at the, at the bar or whatever, I was super starstruck. So imagine when seeing book authors in person, I just get super awkward. And I didn't even get a picture with Suzanne Park. I'm like kicking myself in the butt, but I am so excited to read Low That First Sight. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, probably not, but I have a lot of books in my lap right now and I am not complaining. Um, the next few books I just want to touch upon briefly because they are part of a series and I don't want to give anything away, but one book I bought is The Burning God by R. Kwong. She is author of Babel that I talked about before, but this is the last book in her Poppy War trilogy. And so I told myself that I want to read the trilogy soon. So I finally bought the third one so I can have it on hand when I read it. But I have not read anything yet. It's just there. It's just there for me to hold and smell. <laughs> um, the other one that I got in late September is Kingdom of the Feared. And I had this pre-ordered since earlier this year. And it's so embarrassing because I do this all the time. When I pre-order books, I don't remember where I pre-order from. <sighs> I should check. It's a simple solution, Eliza. Just check. But... Two of these books actually came in, so I had to go and return one. Anyway, so this is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of Kingdom of the Beard. This is the last book in the Kingdom of the Wicked um, trilogy, and I'm so excited. I heard this one was really good, and I heard it ended really well, so I am excited to read this one. The first book, if you haven't read it yet, it's about like these two sisters who are like witches, and they grew up together, taught to be fearful of these demons. Anyway, so her sister goes missing and is found dead with a demon hovering over her, and she's like, I'm going to make it my life's mission to get revenge, right? Anyway, so this is the last one, and I heard it's really good. Oh, and this one, The Ballad of Never After. So this is kind of like the spin-off series to the Caraval trilogy, and I've been trying to stop myself recently from buying, you know, full sets of books for series that I do not know if I liked yet. And I know it sounds stupid because I just talked to you about the Poppy War trilogy. Anyways, I've been trying to stop myself from buying full sets without knowing that I like the first one already. So Caraval, I have not finished um, the full series. So I never really expected to buy the spinoff. But my husband actually bought me Once Upon a Broken Heart the other year or so. And so when I saw this at Mysterious Galaxy and I saw that it was signed, I was like, you know what, let me just buy it. So I bought this. I have all the books up to date right now and I should just read it. So yes, I bought this one. So those are all the books that I got in September. Now I want to just, you know, update my bookish box subscription. All right. So I'm a little bit sad because I recently found out from Daphne and Sam that the bookish box had a little bit of bad stuff going on. Like things about an author and her arthritis and they're just demanding her to do her signatures by hand instead of a stamp. So I was looking into that and I was kind of disappointed. 
about the bookish box because I love their books and they're just like so amazing but I mean I guess we'll see they recently did increase their price to to 38 bucks per book and that's really that's a lot for some of these books especially because I don't know they are really nice but time will tell if I will keep being subscribed to this book I just know that they did the from blood and ash series that was really amazing and i've just been subscribed ever since so uh, this is the war of two queens that i got earlier this year oh it's just so beautiful and this one actually came in like perfect condition because some of them some of them are a little like dented and stuff like that but i've also been hearing that their books sometimes come with missing pages and this concerns me because i don't really read these books right away they just sit on my shelf and collect us you know but anyways this is the war of two queens this is the fourth book in her from blood and ash series i actually haven't read this one yet so i'm excited to delve back into the the world especially since book two in the spin-off series is coming out in november but just look how pretty it is it's just amazing so i don't know if they're going to <laughs> if they're gonna just continue releasing special editions i might stay subscribed just to get those in the future but honestly it's very expensive so that is one and so i forgot to talk about this in a past wrap-up video but i got what lies beyond the veil by harper l woods i don't think this is necessarily a new series but this is like a new edition that they did and it is like a adult fantasy romance dealing with Faye. i don't know too much else about it but look at the artwork it's so nice and let's see oh, i love it some of their special editions are kind of hit and miss some of them are really good and some of them are just okay and for 38 bucks i would want them to be like this quality all the time but so this is my um july book and the book for august is untainted by lillian t james i think this is a series two and this is the first book i kind of like that they do that when they introduce a series in their bookish subscription box they make sure that we get the first one at least i think so actually i don't think that was the case with neon gods but anyways i have not read this book yet all i know is that it is adult fantasy romance and this woman she has some sort of power that she doesn't know what it is yet and then she crossed paths with this prince who really needs her and I don't know who knows but I heard it's really popular I just need to start reading my bookish subscription boxes so yes that is my book haul let's see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 14 books that I talked about I kind of need to slow it down but I already have some books that I want to buy this next month so yes that is my September haul. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. Let me know down below what books you have bought and what you're excited to read. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.